What's the state of Amanda? I know we kind of glossed over it. Mm-hmm. What's going on with her since you were her best friend and you seem like you had the best relationship as a co-star with her? And you know, and that's a big reason why I wanted to be part of this documentary and also why I started like Child Star Adv- Advocacy. Um, you know, I, I created a reality show that we're still pitching out there called Child Star Reboot that just just discusses you know what child stars have gone through and how they can prevail past the whole system but as far as amanda she's been recently caught on the streets naked like mm. doing uh very heavily on drugs it's, it's pretty well known you could tell by her demeanor that she's been battling some stuff so uh always definitely prayers out to her but she's also you know canceled a lot of appearances um and hasn't really been on the straight and narrow from what we can tell from the coverage that we see so it looks like she's a uh- Codependent of something Yeah yeah I, I would definitely say so And you know Hopefully I don't know the, Her state of mind now you know, mm-hmm. But she has admitted to it and, and you know Has attempted to get clean And hopefully she's On the right path um, And so I would just You know Just hope Hope and the best And that goes back To my question Like we always hear about These young actors With all this fame And you know a little Money being thrown at them And all this stuff It seems like they lose it somewhere in between the lines. I don't know if they got it too early, too fast, or what happens, but you kind of seem it kind of seems like they go crazy. What do you see that happens with on the set or out, off the set that actually leads to this? Contributes to that. And yeah, and I'll say I have my before I you know I judge anyone, I have my own struggles with alcohol and drugs and stuff. Not to that level. You right. know, I would I had luckily I had a, a great support system around me that was like, nigga, this ain't the way, brother. <laughs> We don't do this type of shit in our family. You're going to find your way out and you're going to get out of here free and clear, hopefully. You know, and I'm still battling mentally. Um, But as far as the things that contribute to just the the downfall of child stars and I I would say, you know, there's a lot of things. But to me, the biggest thing is is getting all this money power fame that's given to you and sometimes undeservedly and it's given to you so easily and and then you see it snatched away from you so quickly and the things that you do to cope to try to get it back or Mm, to try to get back to the top of the mountain when you don't realize you peaked at 12 you might have peaked at 12 and you're on your way down is how do you how do you navigate the road down right so i was able you know i was lucky like i said i had a support system that allowed me just to remove myself be a kid go out and clown and rap and do shit that people my age do but if you're constantly on the hamster wheel trying to get to the next show man fuck that show man because a lot of it is is (laughs) within their power you can't control whether they want to give it to you or not you could be the most talented person i've been the most talented in the room and because of my status or because i was on nickelodeon or because i didn't fit the framework that they wanted to to uh you know to promote the show i wasn't offered the job or i was offered and it was then it was offered to somebody else like so a lot of things it's not just your talent that that you know you're not you're not in control you're not in control and so a lot of it is just to me trying to get that get that control and once you realize you don't have it these substances and these parties and all these things that that uh, allow you to forget all the bullshit and all the depression and all the sadness of not being at the top of the mountain just leads you astray. And so it really just takes a good support system or just a reality check, you know, that could get you on the, like my mom just kicked me out, kicked me out and was just like, this is the road you're going to be on. And I was just like, damn, this shit is fucked up. Like, let me, let me just get my shit together right quick because uh, no one's coming back to save me. You know what right. I'm saying? I think as a man, it's easy. Like, especially as a black man, it's a little bit easier to get that, um, that message because it gets drilled into your head from the beginning. But, you know, you one of these white kids out here that just, no, no offense to you. <laughs> Sorry, man, no, I'm a lot of white offense, offense, offense. Yeah, we yeah. kill white All people. offense to this guy. It's <laughs> not a white friendly show. But, <laughs> but I would say, I would just say, you know, they might live a little bit more privileged life where you can do anything and you deserve this, you know? Like, nah, man. That You're not in control of the industry and you can't control who's going to give you, who's going to offer you a job. So it's great because now you can go create your own opportunities in this era, right? We're here and at an independent uh, outlet, you guys got your cameras. You guys can edit this shit right. up and put it out. We couldn't. You can't.
can't do that shit back then end up on TV. It's kind of, there was no social media. There's no way to promote yourself. So you're really dependent on going into auditions, hoping that someone offers you a job. And even if they do, that you actually make it to the screen because you could do the whole project. And I'm like, ah, oh, that shit was cool. And we could put somebody else in it. So there's just a lot of factors, I think. But mostly it's just trying to get back to the mountaintop that so drives people crazy. the thing of you being on top of the world and then all of a sudden you being released and you're that thirst to try to get back. I believe so, man. That's what it is. Okay. I believe so. And you're going to see that. The next wave is going to be the social media stars. You know what I'm saying? Like, for us, it was... Like, I just seen... Uh, what was... Uh, Hide your kid, how's your wife, Andre, Andre Dotson or whatever. Right, right, right. He just got on there and was like, y'all y'all using my shit, y'all ain't... They sound just like a child star syndrome. Like, but you know what? I noticed that whole thing about social media stars, especially from the women perspective they take off more and more clothes because they're trying to get more and more attention so yeah i definitely see that and so with kids and you know and then there's also another part of it is that you know we were on disney we're on nickelodeon we have this persona and i know this was definitely part of me and what i went through is like fuck i want i want to dodge all that i want to bypass all that i'm me i'm different i could i could hang out with the kids i could do this i'm cool because even though like some people may perceive it as oh he was on Nickelodeon that's really cool like when you trying to hang out with like you know some th- g- uh, th- I was going to say gangsters and thugs at the same time gugs <laughs> and thanks this nah but uh, you trying to hang out with you know the people that's doing some nefarious activity right they ain't fucking with you like that and I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm kicking it with y'all like nah that's Nickelodeon boy that's the Nick kid man go back to Disney and right, shit like right. that and so you want to try to shed that persona and maybe you go off the edge you go a little bit too far um, I would say that definitely hit the the black kids more so mm-hmm. and where I see like you know some of the white kids is just I, I would say more entitlement or um, you know just wanting to get back to the top of the top of the mountain so there's different factors definitely for sure well going back with Brian uh, Peck mm-hmm. what do you think should be done with him because recently in the was news was it Brian Peck that was his name yeah Brian? right yeah 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 okay recently in the news the the actor from X-Men the Laser Madsen uh, mm-hmm. Alan Thicke Right. And Killiam from um, from SNL wrote a letter, a, you know, a positive letter towards him for his release. Mm-hmm. What should be done with a person that has committed such crimes? Is he still in jail, Brian, uh, Brian Peck? I think, or he's just getting out. Okay. Um, I Who mean, the I fuck wrote a letter for him. A bunch of a bunch of Hollywood you people, sick motherfucker, said, "Hey, he was the greatest." And not saying that, oh, it was okay what he did, but he was the greatest person ever. He, I had never seen him do no shit like that, it's a and picture. he would never. We had nothing but positive, uh, you know, positive experiences with time. Brian Peck. And I mean, obviously, the dude has a personality. He's kicking it with John Wayne Gacy. You know, you got to be interesting <laughs> to get letters back right. and forth from that guy. But um, as far as what should happen to him, you know, I would just say that I'm not. I don't want to sit here and act like I'm God. I want to judge the guy. Like forty-one I, letters. I ain't writing no fucking for letter. a I'll pedo. Take that. Yeah, I ain't. I, forty-one letters. And, and what's crazy is so. What the fuck? Some of the people from Boy Meets World, they they had tried to vouch for him, and they recently did a not podcast. Topanga. Wait a minute, Topanga. So, Topanga. Not Topanga. 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 Yeah. Topanga vouched for him. Topanga, you know. And they came back. <laughs> Apologize. They came back and apologized and some shit. But um, God, I mean, next yeah, yeah, time I see you in the Topanga Mall, I saw <laughs> Topanga in the Topanga Mall one time. I'm gonna trip that bitch next time. You crazy? Yeah, yeah. That cut deep for him. He's a boy in yeah. his world guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, not Topanga. Yeah, you gotta go check out that episode. They kind of walk back. They um, damn. You, know, you better walk that shit back. You sickos. But no, I, I mean, definitely he should definitely have no part in the industry. I mean, at the very least. Um, he comes back straight to fucking straight to kid shit. I, I would be say, crazy. yeah, just keep him away. Give him like 100 feet from kids. Like, you know what I'm saying? No feet Give from him. anything. Keep his ass behind fucking bars. Keep the that's feet, sick. the pickles to yourself. But besides bro. him, what about this fucking Jason Handy guy? Yeah, Jason. He's worse, in my opinion. This motherfucker could come up with like 2,000 child porno videos. He had. Little jars of kids like underwear and shit How in his house. How do you even get kids jars? I don't know. And like you know a what? seven what year old kids underwear in jars and shit. He was the one that was like, 
PA. He was, like, he was walking them all to their car. He was like the, the kids. To the the head of the kids. <laughs> he was like the head of the like, kids. Anyone can take me back, but this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> and he was the one taking them back. And, and he was from Nebraska. I don't know if that's from Nebraska. That I don't think he was from Nebraska. I don't want to say that. Are you from Nebraska? No, yeah. I am. Oh, okay. But the lady did say, Jason Hand, I have this written down. Jason Handy, damn, why, why the fuck did she say he was like a dorky white guy from Nebraska? Was he really from Nebraska? <laughs> I never meant that. I think uh, so. Handy. I think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm not going to throw Nebraska that, out that like that. Like I think Nebraska she was just using that as a reference. <laughs> I think she was just using that as a reference point. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I am from Nebraska. Uh, damn, shout out to Nebraska. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> But this guy, like, was the dude taking the kids in and, like, he, being, he bro, ended up grooming some young girl bro, from yeah, another set, right? The young she girl just, like, quit acting and shit and all this shit because, like, one day her mom said she, like, slammed her computer down and ran into her room because he sent her, like, a dick pic just jacking off uh, to, like, this little girl. And then fucking and she was the like mom was like, years old the mom was too. like, I don't want to say anything because I don't want my daughter to be kicked off any shows. What, what the fuck? I'll kill a motherfucker right now. I got two daughters. Wait I'll a minute. kill a motherfucker right See, now. See, that's the whole thing. Is is it's almost like it seems like some of the parents aren't yeah, stepping like in when they should step in. They like scared. I didn't like her responses, but back then, you like you said, it was like if a parent speaks up, you off the next season. Yeah, so, so you're heavily dependent on you know pleasing these these producers and executive producers and writers and creators. The last thing you want to do is you know shake it up, and you're gonna be off. You're gonna be off the show. And then not yeah. only that, your name is gonna be put across in the industry. They're gonna put it out that you're difficult to work with. This is a difficult mom. I've heard that about other moms. In the nineties, I imagine moms, moms are right? out there just like getting jobs. What is a stage mom? A stage here. mom is somebody <laughs> looking out for their fucking kids. They, they have these bad, uh, you know, they put a, a bad mark on stage moms that's trying to st- stick up for their kids because they know the kids can't stick up for themselves. I don't, they, I don't want to be a stage mom. I'm not gonna say shit. Fuck. Come on, man. Yeah. But that's the that was the culture of now. And and I want to just take. It's not just Nickelodeon, though. It was, I want to say, this was just the culture of the industry. You didn't want to get in the way. You didn't want to make waves. You didn't want to complain about the outfit. You wanted to just go with the flow, get your shit done, knock it out. The difference was they wasn't doing, like, you know, fake cum shots on ABC and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? The other jobs I had, we wasn't, they wasn't dressing me up in tights and underwear and shit. So. Well, explain the cum shots because, I mean, for people who don't know and right, don't right. understand. We didn't really explain that. We, yeah, we didn't really dive into it. So it's just a lot. So there's, it was a consistent thing in a lot of the uh, Nickelodeon scenes, specifically created by Dan Schneider, where there would be a substance that flies at a young woman's face, whether it be some lotion, some goo. Uh, in my case, it was so supposed to be snot, you know, it just hit her right in the face, you know what I'm saying? And I was nose boy at the time, and it just, like I said, looked like penis and testicles all over me. Um, yep. And so... Definitely did. Yeah, Sorry about did, that. yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I didn't even notice it. I was showing my manager, and I, we were looking through old pictures to submit to the doc. He was like, bro, I look like just dick and balls. I'm like... <laughs> And I'm like, damn, it do. And I was like questioning whether I even wanted to put it out there because I don't want to be dick and ball on the shoulder, boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, keep that shit far away from me. But it's important to, you know, to speak up and, and just, you know, participate and not be scared of. I'm not scared of these motherfuckers because I'm, I'm not, first of all, I don't want to be in the industry. And I, I, I want to set up for the next generation to be protected. Like, you don't have to succumb to this bullshit to be part of the industry. You have, you can do it yourself nowadays. So you don't have to do that shit. But um, as far as it comes shots, yeah, it was just a consistent theme of things flying at people's faces and then some type of weird, like, joke. You know what I'm saying? Like, either some type of pleasure or some type of grossness. It was like a joke or something, too, or they was like just kept hitting these kids where it was like they were almost puking out like fucking cum at their mouths basically like just some they were had a, they had them ingesting like, the sugar uh, just oh yeah real, yeah yeah the sugar real thing. sugar and coffee like at no to no end and then in the scene it was just like they were foaming they were at the mouth of thing. just like yeah it was crazy clear gooey substances did you get hit with a cum shot <laughs> hell no I doubt he that was <laughs> that way hey. Shooting. Yeah, I was shooting. I'm a shooter, bro. No, this boy was a shooter. No, this boy was a shooter. 
shooter. Yeah, you respect, respect the shooter. Right? You respect right. the you shooter. That's right. right man. But, but you yeah. said in the doc that that was the most uncomfortable thing for you was like being in tights and shit, right? Yeah, just the tights. See, it wasn't. I, I wasn't even thinking about cum shots or nothing like that. Yeah. I was just. Like, give me I was, these fucking tights. Yeah, but they was putting. I was pillow boy, nose boy, vote boy. Damn, a lot of boys, boys man. That's you know fucked what I'm up. Saying? And now <laughs> I, I rap as Lee Boy. I don't know if it's just like trauma or yeah, something. Yeah, that's like, trauma. It's just ingrained. <laughs> that's trauma. It's ingrained. Now. 